Good afternoon, I'm Dean Mickelson. I'm the editor of Oil and Gas Middle East. And today we are in Saudi Arabia for IPTC. And we are talking to Sharif of Nasser. So welcome. Thank you, sir. And my first question, where I kind of want to go is, can you explain more what Nasser is working on here in Saudi Arabia and how you see the company growing? So, you know, as you know, Nasser has started uh, back five years ago, six years ago now. And we fused the biggest national companies to, be called, to, make, to make it the biggest national company in the region. And we've been growing steadily over the last five years. And obviously the region is growing market-wise, rig size, uh, portfolio. So now today the company is definitely the largest, I would call the largest national company in the region. We have around 6,500 people. Uh, That's substantial growth over yes, six years. from 1,000. Yes. five years ago and uh, revenue wise the company almost tripled more than tripled actually in revenue so and we are everywhere in the middle east which is good right so we have a very nice base in kuwait uh, iraq uh, uae oman and definitely our largest business in saudi so more than half of the companies in saudi and we added a lot of portfolio of the segment to make sure that we cater and provide services for the customer that answer all the difficulties or the challenges now with the oil field set. So what segments are growing in your portfolio? So today, we obviously, the biggest growth is the frac. Our okay. fracturing business is the biggest uh, now. Uh, we started from nothing. We didn't have frac. And uh, back in 2019, under the leadership of Aramco, we actually went and told them, you know, we can do the same type of jobs we do in the US with our partners. We can replicate this in Saudi Arabia. And we don't need to do two or three stage a day. We can do 12, 13 stage a day, which basically makes the unconventional economical because you need to so do more now stages. So you're turning unconventional economical. It is. Saudi it Arabia. is obviously yeah. Saudi who led that, yes. Aramco who led that. We were just an enabler by doing our services to, to ensure that we were the first company in the Middle East to, to do this number of stages per day. We are actually, the best record was four. When we came, we started with 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Okay. Today, you know, Saudi does 18 stage a day, 23 oh. hours of pumping. Do you see unconventionals growing here as well? Absolutely. To complement yeah. the conventional oil? Absolutely. I think uh, the, 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 everybody talks about it. His Royal Highness, uh, 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 Amin Nasser. Everybody talks about it very big. Uh, the unconventional in Saudi became economical. Uh, what they did here is, uh, I would say, second to none, uh, world class development uh, from the understanding of the exploration phase until production. And that's where I would say they did a better job than the U.S. Because okay. the U.S., they are where they are with the development of unconvention because of statistical model. They did so hundreds of thousands of wells. Here you cannot afford to do hundreds of thousands of trial and error. No. They did a lot of science first and then they developed it properly and now they're gonna get the ga first gas in 25. Found the geology, went that way, exactly. The science, and and spend money on the science at the beginning, yeah. and they optimize it when they perfected it. And that's how you're running the company as well. The exactly. Science drives the company into other aspects as well, like your new technology, Roya. Yes. Downhole. Absolutely. Yeah. So w w as we as we did very well in the company for our what we said for business or the the the, the main segment. We went to develop our own IP and go to sophisticated electronics with okay. downhole tools. And this is a journey that is tough. So we decided to do that three and a half years ago. And we invested in, a, in a two uh, startup in the US, bought them and give them money. And we developed, basically, we looked at whatever exists in the market on the rotary steerable MWD, LWD, how can we get features that are better and make it our own? Okay. And this took basically three years. And then we started deploying the tool to test them in the US. Uh, with so the rotary you do a lot of testing in the US? Everything is done here. in the US because okay. of the ease of testing, right? Okay. The yes. wells are next door to the development. Something yeah. happens to the tool, you can go back to the product center, so in Texas, fix it. Basin. Exactly. Yeah. Everything is in Texas. And. Uh, we did it on our R&D center in Houston. We uh, developed the three tools 
uh, and, uh, and we run the jobs very successfully. Then we came to Oman. We did our uh, LWD tool, uh, run very well, and we did the comparison. The data were excellent. And the tool, what I call triple combo plus plus, because it has more features, more features. but in one color only. So I don't know. And the drillers like that. They don't have yeah. to have a connection. They have one color and they have the triple combo yeah. plus the azimuthal gamma ray. So spectral gamma ray. So that's where they like it and it's closer to the bit. Then we developed our MWD tool where basically, again, we wanted to have a high frequency rate than the market. So you have okay. a leadership by two of the international yes. service company and this will become the one after, but it catered for all our needs, basically. And then the big uh, gorilla, I would say, in drilling is the rotary steerable. Yes. And rotary steerable is very uh, hard to build and very hard to prove reliability. So we build it. We drilled around 70,000 feet, 70, feet. 70,000 feet in the US. Okay. Uh, now the tool is here in Saudi Arabia. We launched it yesterday. And we are going to drill in the next couple of months trial in Aramco to prove that the tool can perform. And then obviously after that, you need to get uh, uh, run. So right. the key of all this is really you need to have a good support from the customer to be able to accomplish and that. Aramco and Aramco that support, is a perfect client to work for. They're more like a partner rather than a client. Absolutely, yeah. absolutely. And they encourage new technology. They encourage development. They want to try new things. Yeah. So very, uh, it's really a pleasure to work for them. And looking ahead here at Saudi Vision 2030 as well, yes. that decarbonization comes into play. Yes. Uh, Ramco using oil funds to fund the net zero transition. Correct. And you guys just created a new program called NETA. Yes. So can you explain more about NETA? Yes. So, you know, I, I'm personally a believer of decarbonization before it became fame, if you yeah. like. So we launched that during the FII in Riyadh in January 21. And that we called it ESG because it's the big name, ESG impact. Okay. How can you really make an impact, not just so talk? environmentally, sustainability. Absolutely. But you make a measurable impact. You can see it, you can measure it. And as we put a lot of technology in it, and a lot of, if you like, uh, it was in infancy, you know, uh, some sensors to measure methane, uh, water, et cetera, et cetera. And we did some pilot project that were very successful. We decided to, after the COP28, to rebrand as well. And we called it NIDA, which is actually NIDA in Arabic, which is call to action. So let's stop talking, execute. Let's take this call action now to make I have now. application. So it's a NEST environmental decarbonization application. Now I have proven technology because it's not anymore talk. It's not a startup. It's not a, a test. I have two pilot tests, extremely successful, again, with Aramco. I have a project that I run now for water in Iraq okay. uh, to take the brackish water, the unused water, and make it dry. Is and in southern in, Iraq, Basra area? Yes, in Basra, okay. with, working for Beckel. And I made a press release on yes. it with the client. And this basically shows the world that the industry not only can decarbonize themselves, but they can actually become a provider to minerals and fresh water to the community when there is no water. Which is so extremely it's the, important right now in Iraq. It's a poverty. You know, yes. we have the high, this is the world highest poverty for water per person. Yes. So can you imagine we dump 5x the water for the oil we produce? So if I can take part of that, first of all, I prevent the industry from using fresh water in their work. So I, I keep this to the community and to agriculture. In addition, I can start to have access when I make scalable project to give back to the community and give back uh, 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 salt. You know, I was just selling them, you know, 10 percent, just 10 percent of the of the uh, uh, the 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 water we dump, if I can take the salt from it, clean it, it's enough for 5% worldwide of sodium chloride, the entire world. So I don't need so to mine taking, it. Exactly. So I just it, recover it and, that's, it and that becomes the full carbon circular economy, right? Yes. Because you take from 
you take the water, you recycle it, you make it good for what you need to do. And the minerals that comes out, you extract it as calcium, sodium, etc. And imagine if we have lithium, yes, becomes very good for renewable. Exactly. And that's what we need, lithium for batteries. And it's very right. rare because it's only 50 ppm. So, and that's what they do, for example, in Chile. And in some, so there is a lot of technology the industry can do. And I think that narrative will will be will resound very well with the youngsters with the people outside the industry to see that oh this industry is responsible and they are doing some action this industry is making change happen exactly we're realizing okay we've done this so long for so much time yes but we can change we can yes. make our society better around us. exactly not only do we contribute by cleaning but we also contribute by saving the air better absolutely downhole work absolutely and we're, we're bringing technology forward Yes, biodiversity, agriculture, make parks. Imagine yes. people go to the oil field instead of seeing yes. sand and lakes exactly. of oil, they see parks and trees and exactly. we can. It's not that. It. That's why we just need to make it economical. Yes. So where do you see Nestor growing in the next five years? I, I think the company will keep the same growth profile because again, we're relatively small. So we have a space to grow at that rate, 15, 20% per year. And I think the addition of the decarbonization can take us to plus 25%. Yes. And then we can get to scalable project, we become something else, right? Because we might team up with some different industry to, to make something very unique. So I think the company growth and the future is very bright. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you.